Hello and welcome to uh, STAT, STAT 310 Lecture 10. Um, so today I'm going to cover the maximum likelihood estimator and that's in uh, 8.5 of, uh, of the textbook. Um, and I'd say uh, this, so this is an, an alternative approach to, uh, to estimating, to find to form uh, estimates for the param for parameters theta, um, uh, an alternative to the method of moments which we've been focusing on for the last couple of lectures. Um, and I'd say this is one of the more important lectures because the maximum likelihood estimate, it's a really important uh, kind of principle and approach for doing estimation. And it's gonna be the basis of a lot of the calculations that we do uh, later on in the course. So I'd say that this is a really important uh, procedure to kind of uh, understand. So I'm gonna kind of go through it, like build up to it and then kind of go through it and provide uh, a number of examples today. So just recall that um, in, our, in the framework that we're dealing with, um, uh, we have our sample data, which is you know x1 through to xn. Um, our distribution parameters and the setup that we're in throughout chapter eight is that uh, we have uh, you know xi follows some distribution um, with with some parameters associated with it, and those are the parameters of interest that we're trying to kind of estimate from the data. And we assume throughout that our xi's are independent. Um, and P is a distribution, like uniform or normal or, or whatever distribution is specified. So um, we focused on uh, estimators or, uh, or statistics as the third component of the framework. And so the last couple of lectures is really focused on the method of moments uh, estimator uh, estimation. And so today we're going to talk about maximum likelihood, which is kind of the second. Uh, so this is an 8.5 and what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and so it's a different procedure for uh, for estimation that gives you that allows you to kind of estimate parameters from data, um, and this is probably one of the more widely used uh, estimates um, or estimators in uh, in statistics. So um, this is very useful, and as I mentioned, it will form this procedure will form the basis for a lot of what we discuss uh, for the rest of the course. So this is a this, I'd say today is a very important lecture, as I've already mentioned. Just um. Just to kind of build up to the maximum likelihood uh, estimation, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, the method of moments first and kind of why you might consider an alternative um, to that. So remember that the general idea behind the method to moments procedure is that you find moments from the data. So you kind of find like the sample mean, the sample variance or other moments uh, from, from the data. And then the idea is that you relate the parameters of interest theta to those moments in the population, and then use this relationship to uh, estimate the uh, estimate the uh, the parameter. One thing to note, though, uh, about the method of moments procedure is the only information you're using about the distribution is related to um, is related to the moment. So you're using like the mean, the variance, or any other moments that you might be uh, capturing. But maybe there's more information that you know, you're not actually using about the distribution. So this is the only information that we're using about the distribution as its moments. So what if we were to use you know more information? So like the whole distribution somehow that factors in. So in the method of moments, we don't actually use the distribution as such. All we use is kind of the relationship. But the only place we use the distribution is the relationship between the, the parameters theta and the uh, and the moments, like the mean. But what if we were to use more like all the information about the distribution? And and that's the the general idea. So This leads to the maximum likelihood maximum likelihood principle. And so this kind of stems from the question is that, uh, so the, the idea is, is that you know distribution P but don't know theta. So that's the, so 
this is kind of the the general challenge that we're dealing with uh, often throughout the course that you know the underlying distribution family like it might be like a a normal or a uniform or something else but you don't know all the parameters that uh, determine that uh, that, that t- determine that distribution so the basic I- idea behind the So the basic idea behind the maximum likelihood principle is is that we observe data x1, x2, up to xn. And then the question we ask is how likely are you to observe that data? If the parameter is theta, okay, and then and then since theta is unknown, choose theta that maximizes this likelihood. Okay, and so so in in words theta hat ml maximizes the likelihood of uh, observing the data theta x1, x2 up to xn overall Theta. Okay, so that's kind of just a heuristic kind of in words uh, description of what the uh, what the maximum likelihood principle is uh, is actually doing. So the key thing is, um, so so what we need to do is to you know, what is the likelihood function? And that is so L of uh, so it's going to be a function of your data, and it's going to be a function of your parameter. And we want to find theta hat ml. It's the it's the uh, theta. So arg max is this notation here that I'm using. It's the theta here that maximizes this. So the, the data is fixed, the theta is an unknown, and we want to maximize this. So find theta hat ml. And so, you know, the, the other kind of question that we have to tackle is how do we find this maximum? Yeah, and so you can see, you can hopefully get an idea that um, calculus is going to be very important here because we're trying to maximize the function. Um, and we're trying to find the point that maximizes it. That's what the maximum likelihood estimate is. Uh, and so um, we're going to be using, as, as we'll see shortly, calculus to do that. Okay, so now let's focus on the likelihood function. So what the likelihood function represents is the likelihood 
or you can think of it as like, or probability of observing the data x1, x2 up to xn given that uh, the uh, unknown parameter is theta. Okay. So P of XI is um probability or likelihood of uh, observing single point. single point xi. If we want to look at that, um, since these are uh, independent, the um, that you can think of as like, I'm going to use this notation This is going to be the joint PDF or PMF of uh, X1, X2 up to Xn. Okay. And because we, because we have independence, this is just going to be equal to the product because of, and this only follows from independence. And this, so this is going to be the product of uh, these, uh, these functions. So this is going to be, Okay, so um, typically, you know, when you uh, when you when you find uh, joint PDFs or PMFs of n variables, um, you know, you might have a, you know, a, 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 like like you know, you, if if there's a dependence, you have to kind of calculate this distribution, and it's not always that nice to calculate this joint distribution. But because we have independence here, which is something we're going to generally assume throughout this chapter, um, and for a lot of the course. Um, you can, uh, you can, you know, this this joint PDF or PMF works out very nicely to just be a product. So remember that one of the key properties of independence, uh, which we learned from uh, three or nine or um, or in any any equivalent probability course, um, is that um, is 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 that uh, the PDFs or PMFs multiply, and so this means the likelihood function is uh, kind of. Um, it is is reasonably it, it is easy to calculate. You can just do it as the product of each uh, of each marginal. So this is just the so the product of all marginals. Okay, so this is essentially all there is to it to some degree that. Um, So theta had ML, basically it's just the, I'm using this notation argmax. If you haven't seen it, it's it's not super complicated. All it is is just, it's the, it's the point that, uh, that maximizes this. So this is just, and we've already calculated that because we have independence, Okay, and so just to explain the so argmax, the theta that so it's just the theta that maximizes this likelihood function. Okay, so.
So the question is then how do we find this theta hat ML, this sum maximizer? And then, so this boils down to the question is, you know, how do we find maximizes of maximizes four, I should say. Um, and then this is, um, this is purely a calculus exercise. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I've kind of illustrated the principle to you, um, of how to, how to calculate maximum likelihood estimates. Um, and this is going to be a very important thing. So we're going to just go through lots and lots of examples, um, to kind of illustrate, uh, to illustrate what's going on here. So let's just go through examples to kind of see what, 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 what's going on. So let's, um, let's begin with the, uh, the Bernoulli P, um, example. Okay, so so well, it will start with an easier example, actually. This turns out dumb. We'll, we will go back to that example, hopefully by the, uh, the end of today's lecture, but it's not the, it, there, there are simpler ones to start with. So let's start with, let's look at, uh, exponential Lambda. Okay. So, and, and we're assuming independence here as always, and we want to find Lambda hat ML. Okay, so so we know that um, so this is the uh, the PDF, uh, and we assume we we know that x is bigger than zero here. Okay, so here theta equals to equals to lambda. So the likelihood is just um Okay, and um once once we take products, we know that uh the, the lambda just gets multiplied through uh, n times. And then we've got an exponential here. So the um, exponential then just becomes a, uh, a sum and we get this. Okay, so this is the, uh, the likelihood function. And so we know that uh, lambda hat ML equals arg max. Okay. How do we find, you know, so how do we find Lambda hat ML? So, um, Differentiate and uh, set to zero is kind of the, the short answer. Um, 
So what I'm going to first do actually is uh, give you a, uh, this is going to be a very useful thing to do in a lot of examples here. So we see an exponential here and exponentials are, um, you know, we can deal with them, but they're a little bit annoying. Um, and uh, we'll see that uh, sometimes getting rid of the exponentials by taking logs um, is, uh, is going to be very beneficial because, uh, and, 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 and I'll, I'll show you uh, why. So I'm going to kind of do a, a side, um, a side sort of definition here that we're, we are going to use a lot um, in this course. So, so that let, um, so I'm using this script L here. And that's going to be log of uh, the natural log of uh, x1, x2, xn, theta. So here log refers to natural log. So some of you might see this as like ln um, for natural log, but uh, you know, sometimes it's referred to as log. So I'll use, uh, I'll just use um, that notation. Okay, so so why is this useful? Um, so you can try this a few times, but taking logs often makes finding theta hat ml much easier. Um, and, uh, this L, this log function has, uh, very nice properties as we will see shortly. And then, I mean, the underlying reason why, um, like is cause like, so if, um, we know that uh, in the independent case, we know that that's the product. Okay, so then L of uh, then that's just going to be the product. Or I should say log of the product. Okay, and so what happens to the log of the product? That becomes the sum of the logs, and that's going to make things a lot easier. Okay, and the other thing to keep in mind is that. Uh, Theta hat ml equals uh, arg max of theta of um, L, big L. Um, and that also equals to, because of uh, script L. And the reason for this is that since log is a is an increasing function
Okay, so there's a fair bit of calculus kind of packed in here and um, you'll hopefully get the hang of this as you see more and more uh, examples. But I'm introducing this notation here because we're going to kind of use it um, use it here um, for, this, uh, for this calculation. Um, by taking logs of this likelihood, our goal is to find a, a, an, a, a theta that maximizes this likelihood. So it turns out that you don't change the maximizer by taking logs because, because logs is a strictly increasing function. So whenever you apply a function that's increasing, and so this is something that's true about calculus, um, because you're applying an increasing function by just uh, the, 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 fun the theta that maximizes the likelihood is gonna be the, exactly the same as the theta that maximizes the log likelihood. Okay, so now let's go back to this example again. x1 through to, uh, to xn is uh, exponential lambda. So we, uh, we found that uh, okay, so now let's actually um, take a log here. So and then we can say log of uh, lambda to the n e to the negative lambda. And I'm just reminding you again that I'm using log here to refer to as uh, um, log base uh, log base the natural number and not log base ten. Once you take logs, this expression becomes a lot easier to deal with. It's just, and then the E disappears and we just get, okay. So now, um, so to find maximizer, We want to take derivative and set to zero. So the derivative of, uh, so again, there's just a lot of calculus crammed into here. Um, so to take the derivative of a log, you just get n over uh, lambda. So again, this is a, a calculus uh, exercise. And then the derivative of something that's linear, all you're just going to get is, is this because, uh, you know, when you take the derivative of uh, x times something, it's just whatever that something is. So therefore, what we have is that... Uh, So to set derivative to zero, and so therefore we have that uh, that equals n over, and you might notice that that's just one over x bar, and it, it turns out that um, if you recall. Lambda hat mm is also one over x bar. So in this case, lambda hat ll equals lambda hat mm equals one over x bar. Okay, so um, So therefore, um, so 
So maximum likelihood and method of moments give same estimator. And so there's really two ways of looking at this. You might think, oh, wow, we did all this calculus and all that. And all we got was exactly the same answer that we got um, for, for the method of moments, which for some of you may appear to be a simpler uh, procedure. And that's a fair enough point of view. Um, the other way to look at it is positively, which kind of says that the maximum likelihood procedure um, sort of is the best kind of thing you can do where it uses all the information about the distribution. And this kind of tells us that um, the method of moments uh, that, you know, the method of moments is actually the best is, is in some sense the best you can do. So you couldn't actually do better than just using the, uh, the sample mean. And so I just wanted to kind of uh, give just the, so the overview of the procedure So the overall view of the procedure for calculation, so we have that, uh, you know, So then, uh, you know, the first thing is to look at the likelihood, log likelihood, and then we're going to actually just look at the log of uh, that. And I repeat again that the log we can look at because, you know, this is a, a function that is an increasing function, so the maximizer is going to be the same. And so this is exactly just this log likelihood function, which I've given a new name, which is script L. So if you know the uh, the distribution function, you know which we did in this case because it was an exponential. This works out pretty nicely because um, you can essentially just uh, sum things up. It's just log of uh, p of x i theta, and then you know we had that uh, in this case p of x i given theta is uh, lambda e to the negative lambda x, uh, and so or lambda e to the negative lambda xi. So um, therefore log of p of xi given theta is just uh, gonna be log of lambda minus lambda times xi. And so we after you sum that all up, you get back that. And, then, and so then, So we want to find the maximizer of the L function. Through differentiation. Um, us it's usually through differentiation. So in, in most examples you see, um, let me just write that more neatly. So, um, In most examples, you see the way you're going to do it is just uh, take the derivative and set it to zero. Um, but there are going to be some examples where you're not going to do that. And, and some of you may actually kind of be looking at me and saying, well, just because the derivative is zero, how do you know it's a maximizer? And that's a very good question. Um, you can... by showing that uh, um, double derivative
L of uh, x1, x2 at uh, lambda hat ml, you can actually show that this is bigger than zero. Um, so I'll use the notation L prime prime. Um, I, that should, sorry, that should be less than zero, not bigger than zero. Um, this shows that lambda hat ml is a maximizer. So this is again, I'm kind of drawing on a lot of facts and things uh, about calculus that um, hopefully are somewhere at the back of your mind. Um, if they're not right now, that that's okay. Um, we'll kind of see more and more examples. And as you do more of those examples, hopefully some of those uh, calculus ideas will uh, will come back to you. So you can, this is an exercise for you to show that. Um, if you plug in, uh, if you take a double derivative, um, so I'm just gonna, you know, if you take a double derivative of this expression, um, you're gonna get a negative uh, uh, n over lambda squared here, and then a constant, and so uh, that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be uh, less than, uh, that, that's always gonna be less than zero. But yeah, you can, you can show that. So let's do, um, Another example here. Let's go to kind of an example that we're very familiar with here. And now we have two parameters to deal with. Um, we uh, have the, uh, the, the population mean and the population variance, and we want to find uh, the, the maximum likelihood estimate. So so we have these, uh, these two parameters, and we know that the distribution Okay, and uh, therefore the lo the uh, likelihood sorry that should not be a lambda that should be a mu. So li the likelihood function, and this is capital L, so it's the overall likelihood, not the log likelihood. And once again, um, you know, we can, things can simplify a fair bit. Um, we've got powers here, so we're just going to, um, So the, uh, the powers are going to come through, and once again, because we have exponential, um, the, that's going to become a sum, okay? So we know that... Um, Okay, so once again, uh, we're gonna take logs. So so if this is the log, Um, this function, if we, uh, if we take a log to it, it's going to be, so 
So it's going to be a negative n over 2 log of uh, 2 pi, n log of sigma. And then, uh, you know, the e is going to very conveniently disappear. Um, so we're just using pro properties of the log here. Okay, so we're going to again work with like, and again, um, the log here kind of makes things very, so we have arg max of mu and sigma squared, and then it's going to be Okay, so to find maximizer, take derivative with respect to both mu and sigma. Okay, so we have these two um, we have these two parameters here, mu and sigma, and so. If we want to maximize this function over, over both of them, you just need to take derivatives with respect to mu and derivatives with respect to sigma, and we'll see what we get. So when, when, when you do that, um, so let's take uh, derivative with respect to We take the derivative with respect to mu. Um, you can see that uh, the the first two terms cal cancel out because there's no mu in them. So we have that uh, you know the only term that's relevant is that last term, and so we have um, and so we multiply out by the two, and then the negative gets cancelled, so that becomes a positive. Um, and we get, um, we're just going to get, we basically just drop the, uh, so this is going to be, the mu hat ml is zero. So, and, and because the sigma squared is just some number, um, that's, uh, that's bigger than zero. This is equivalent to okay, and so therefore we have n times mu hat ml equals the summation of i equals one to n x i. So mu hat ml equals. And so that equals x bar. Okay, so, you know, once again, this is potentially not very surprising. We get that the um, best estimate for the, uh, for the mean, uh, for the normal, is, uh, is, the pop is the sample mean. So now let's look at the, uh, the sample variance. So with respect to sigma, if we look at the derivative with respect to sigma, you have a log again, so that's going to just uh, be a uh, negative n over sigma squared. Um, and then we have minus one over two sigma squared, so that's gonna be, um, I'm gonna, because we're eventually gonna set this to zero, so this is gonna become minus two over sigma, or the twos cancel, right? Yeah, so we have two over two. Um, so I'm doing, uh, yeah, calculus here uh, again. And we want that uh, that this thing should be should be zero. So what we end up with then is that, uh, and yeah, there should be a plus here because uh, we have a negative in front and then a negative on the the denominator. That does not look right. Yeah, so there shouldn't be a squared here. This should not be a squared there.
And if you uh, put that together, so we know that mu hat ml equals x bar. Um, so therefore what we have is that uh, one over sigma hat ml cubed x bar squared, that's going to be equal to n over uh, sigma hat ml. Um, and, you know, you can multiply both sides by, um, you can divide both sides by n and multiply both sides by sigma hat ml cubed, and so it's basically cross multiplication. And you just get that sigma hat ml squared is 1 over n. Okay, so we get that um, mu hat ml equals x bar and sigma hat ml squared equals 1 over n. Okay. And once again, we reach this, in some ways, nice, but in other ways, kind of, you know, maybe a bit unsatisfying conclusion is that, uh, that the maximum likelihood and method of moments estimators are the same. Okay. So... So, you know, you might ask, you know, or again, we've again gone through this complicated calculation and done this calculus to get exactly the same answer that we already got. Um, and so why are we bothering to do this? So, so, um, is, so a natural question you might ask is that you know, is theta hat ML ever different from theta hat uh, MM? So is the maximum likelihood estimate ever different from um, the method of moments estimate? Um, and obviously the reason we're going through all this is because there should at least be one example where that's the case. So let's see that. And so um, let's do a third and final example for the day. So we're going to do this, go, go back to the uniform uh, zero theta example. And so recall that uh, the theta had mm was just two times x bar um, in that case. Uh, so it's just two times the uh, sample mean. Let's see if, uh, if we get uh, that to be the maximum likelihood estimate. So remember that, um, so this is one example that's going to look a little bit different here. So P of x i uh, in theta, that's going to be 1 over theta for x i between 0 and theta, and 0 otherwise. Okay, and so the likelihood here is something we have to be a little bit more careful of here. And the reason we have to be more careful is because the actual support of the distribution, so where the distribution is non-zero, actually depends on the parameters. So... So this is actually going to be, you know, product of i equals 1 to n of 1 over theta. But then you also have this indicator that 0 less than xi is less than theta. So, Okay, so we've got, uh, you know, this indicator function. And, and the thing to sort of note here is that uh, the range of uh, xi of xi depends on theta. So that's why we have to be so careful here. So this is something to kind of just think a little about, bit about and get your head around. So in the first two examples, the uh, exponential and the normal, um, the range of the x's was always the same. For the exponential, it's always 0 to infinity. For the normal, it was always negative infinity to infinity. This example is a little bit different because the range of x actually depends on your parameter theta. And so that's why we have to be a little bit more careful in writing out the likelihood function because the likelihood function has these, uh, you know, you're multiplying these uh, PDFs. But the PDFs um, all have this constraint that the xi's need to be between 0 and, uh, and theta. Okay, so... So we're, we're now going to um, find the maximum likelihood estimate. OK. 
Okay, so now let's take the product through again. And once again, um, we get the, the uh, one on theta multiplied just becomes one on theta to the n. The indicators all get multiplied, but you have to keep carrying through all the constraints. So you get indicator of zero less than x1 less than theta intersected with zero less than x2 less than theta intersected with, and then all of them have to be less than theta. And so another way to express this is that If, if, uh, if all of the x, x1 through to xn's are less than theta, you can kind of just write it as the maximum of all of them has to be less than theta. Because, you know, all of them are clearly going to be less than, bigger than zero, you can write this as the maximum of all of them has to be less than theta. Okay, so... Just think a little bit about, uh, just take a little bit of, it might uh, take a bit of time to just get your head around this. Um, basically what I'm saying is that if x1 less than theta intersect x2 less than theta intersect xn less than theta, that event is uh, equal to the event that the maximum of uh, all of them are less than theta. Okay, so those two events are the same. Because I'm just picking, like if uh, if any one of them is uh, violates that constraint, then it becomes a zero, which is exactly what we have when we have the product of these indicators. So if when we have the product of these different uh, indicator functions, um, if any one of them is zero, then that turns it, it turns it off completely. So that's why we have to have the intersection, which means the maximum has to be less than uh, less than theta. Okay. So again, if that argument doesn't quite make sense, uh, just uh, you know think think through it a little bit uh, to see um, you know just to, to see what you uh, what you get. Okay. So we have that. Um, Okay, so we have that, uh, you know, this function that we're trying to maximize is one over theta to the n, um, the indicator that uh, uh, that the maximum of these n uh, values is between uh, zero and uh, and theta. Okay, and so let's think about this function. So we could certainly try to differentiate. So. If we differentiate uh, one over theta to the n, um, you're just going to get, you know, negative uh, n over theta to the n plus one, and then you know that is never zero. Um, and the reason for that is because if we plot what this function looks like, so one on theta to the n basically just looks like. It's a function that kind of just looks like this. So it's uh, at zero, it's infinity, and then it just decreases. So it's just a decreasing function for all theta bigger than zero. And theta obviously is bigger than zero in this case. So, um, so therefore the maximum will occur at an endpoint, at, at an endpoint. So, in particular, um, you want to choose theta to be as small as possible. But then we also know that theta has this constraint. So, we know that theta has to be bigger than. Okay, because otherwise the function's zero and we want it to obviously be bigger than zero. So we want to choose theta to be as small as possible, but we also have theta to be this, theta to, to have this uh, constraint. 
So therefore we have that the maximum likelihood estimator is just the endpoint of this constraint, which is just So it's just the maximum of all of the values, okay? So remember, so here we've got that this is what our, uh, our maximum likelihood estimate is. So Okay, um, and, and then we, and then on the other hand, we have that the, the method of moments estimate was equal to 2x bar. And a natural question to ask is, uh, does theta hat ML make sense? Well, let's think about it. So we know that xi is uniform zero theta. So um, basically, The, um, the PDF just looks like theta, and then this is one on theta, so this is the PDF. So um, xi can just be kind of any value in this range of zero to theta. And so picking the maximum value value makes sense because, you know, um, you know, you're kind of, as you get more and more data, you'd kind of expect to be closer and closer to that. And you take the largest value, you expect to be closer and closer to that endpoint. And remembering that you can't ever go over theta because the uniform doesn't allow you to go to Xi to be bigger than theta. So it sort of makes sense if you think about the, uh, the uniform. And so, you know, um, So there are many arguments, um, we may not get into time to go into them in this course, but there are many arguments to show that uh, beta hat ML is, you know, which is, which is the maximum value is a better estimator than the the method of moments estimate, which is 2x bar. And again, the underlying reason comes back to uh, why, like, you know, the, the, the method of moments estimator only takes into account information about, like, the moments, so, like, the, you know, the mean and the variance and other things like that. But sometimes, you know, the distribution has more information in it. And so, for example, the uniform zero theta, we know that theta is actually the endpoint of the distribution. And we're not using that information at all when we when we calculate the method of moments estimate. On the other hand, the method the maximum likelihood estimate takes the whole distribution into account. So we're exploiting the fact that theta is the endpoint of the distribution to get a better estimate, which we didn't do for the uh, for the method of moments estimate because the, the method of moments estimator only captured the fact that the mean was uh, was was theta over two. Um, but it didn't really tell us anything about the endpoints, whereas the, you know, for a uniform zero theta, we know that the endpoint is theta. And so if we exploit that to actually get an estimate um, for the maximum likelihood, which is what we do here, we get a better estimate than what we do for the, uh, for the method of moments. Yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's everything that we'll cover today. So that's a lot to take in. Um, we're going to spend a couple more lectures on this principle because it's such, a, such an important uh, such an important topic and hopefully you'll kind of get your head around this. There's a lot of calculus obviously involved in, in this because we're maximizing a function. So um, this is also potentially a good reminder for those of you who um, have gotten some of the, the, the key concepts of calculus, like how to find maximizers of functions or, or minimizers or so on. Um, this is probably a key point, a, a good time to kind of revisit that. Um, and, uh, and, and, but, but it will become more familiar to you as we, as we do more and more examples. All right, uh, thanks very much. Uh, that's it for, uh, for this lecture.